Right, hi. Now we're going to finish off this piece of artwork. Peter, who's moved nearer to me recently, professional artist here, commercial artist, introducing me to all sorts of fantastic, work, fantastic ways and new ways, and uh, we're sharing techniques and methods and our, our, our ideas and art. It's great to have somebody uh, local and close by uh, who's got so much skill and expertise, which is different to mine. So what we're going to do now is coat this piece of work in the resin we've been talking about, this, this twin mix resin, and I know nothing about it, so um, as he's teaching me right through this, I'm going to film this as a record not only for myself to watch and get it right in the future, um, but we're going to actually coat this piece now uh, and, and see it being done. So this might be rather interesting for you as well, because I know many of you have shown a lot of interest in this technique. Right, for resinin, first of all you need resin. Two parts, as we've got in this case. One you'll find is the hardener, and the other one is just your standard resin. Now this is a one-to-one -one resin, in other words it's 50% of each mixed together will give you your resin that you need to cover your artwork with. Now the slight difference, the hardener you can use slightly less, but it's always got to be within 95% to 100% compared to the weight of the other one. That's the only difference. Get it wrong and the resin will never set. So resin. Now to apply your resin you'll need a roller or a brush. We're using a roller because the roller actually works more efficiently on heavily textured artwork. So we're going to start with the roller. Additionally, you need a thermometer. We need to make sure that the temperature in the room is roughly about 25 degrees, which sounds quite warm, but it's the best temperature for the resin to go off and set, but also it avoids any problems with moisture because if the resin gets wet during any part of the process, it won't cure correctly. As you can hear, we've actually got a fan heater going in the background, haven't we, to make sure the yeah, temperature's right? Yeah, make sure and maintain it. You also need a bucket to mix it with, plenty of gloves, spatulas, and it's important when you're using anything to mix resin, it is not porous. So you can't use a wooden stick, for example, It's um, because it holds too much moisture. You need plastic plastic mixes. And to make sure for accuracy you'll also need, in this case, a set of electronic scales. And finally, a timer. And that's it, you're all set to resin. Right. So this, the, the biggest thing there at the moment was this percentage of hardener to resin which sounded yeah. the most awkward and dangerous thing apart from temperature. Yeah. It's basically, if you want to just use the resin on a one-to-one -one basis, then the amount of resin you include, you include the same amount of hardener. That's it. That's the easiest way to do it. Yep. The downside is with that, you'll find out you'll go through, there is never the same amount of resin as there is, uh, sorry, the same amount of hardener as there is resin in any of the packs you buy. That's because the hardener you tend to use slightly less if you measure the measurements out totally to the accuracy that they recommend. The only thing is it's very awkward. That's why most artists will just use the same amount of one to the other. It saves a lot of hassle. So what, how much are we using? We, In this case we need to work out how much resin we need for the first size. And over the time you either work that out yourself over time by experimentation or there is different formula to actually work this out. And normally it's done on a square inch basis. So that's the next thing we need to do with this. Mm. Right, first thing is we need just to check the size of the artwork and covering, which in this case is 48 by 32. And normally we'd actually use a ratio of 1.15 milliliter per square inch. But with this being heavily textured and using obviously the roller, it's going to go a lot further so we can use a lot less resin. The, op the optimum temperature is 25 degrees. 25 degrees makes sure that. Um, there is as little moisture as possible in the room and also over the piece of the artwork. Any less, you open it to moisture, 
any higher is actually better because it cures faster, it cures under heat. Uh, for example, if you pour the same resin into a bucket and leave it, it will actually cure faster because the heat will intensify in the resin. When it's actually put on artwork it goes on thinner, that's why you need to maintain the temperature because it loses heat a lot more rapidly so it takes a long, lot longer to go off. So 25 degrees is about the optimum for the room that you're working in. And now you're just working out the ratios, are you? I am, but I think the ratio for this is too high. Um, the 1.15 mil per square inch means that you'd actually get through the best part of three quarters of this just on one piece. Mm. And that is far too, far too much for it. So I don't think we can actually work the ratios out according to all the calculations that I've got anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix um, a quarter of it and see that should actually cover it, just yeah. a quarter of what we've got. So basically these are, we probably need 250 millilitres of each, I would have thought. But then if we're using slightly less hardener, yeah, it's um, we've got five mil out of every hundred mil. So if we use two hundred and fifty out of the resin, really we only need two forty out of the. Oh. First thing I want to do is measure the resin out because it's heavily textured, and we're using a roller. Normally, this will probably take um, probably between five hundred and seven fifty mil of each resin component mixed together. But because it's every texture we're using the roller, we can reduce that quite dramatically. So we're only looking at 250 mil of the resin, and because the hardener we can get away with less, we're probably looking at 240 to 245 millilitres of the hardener. So it doesn't matter which way you pour them, you pour one in, then the other, it doesn't matter which comes first. I'm just going to start with the with the resin. So we're looking for 250. It's very gloopy and you've got to be quite careful with it because suddenly a big lot will drop out. You can probably see it actually increasing in speed quite rapidly now. I'm just going up to 200. It's going to slow down a bit now. And we're looking for 250. That's near enough. It doesn't matter if you go a little bit over, don't worry about it. Alright, so that's 254. So for the hardener, seems we've just gone a 4 over, we'll take it up to about 241 just to compensate for a little bit. So reset the scales. Now the hardener, you'll find, is a lot freer to pour, so you can get a higher degree of accuracy on it. Same again, whizzing through the numbers. And again up to 200. Slow things down a bit. Two four two. Just get that little bit. And there we are. Two four two. Two four three. So that's the resin and the hardener. Now, once they're both together, they'll start to activate where they come in contact with each other. But you need to thoroughly mix it, and I recommend around about six minutes. Now, when you mix it make sure you get right to the sides and also you drag everything around so it has a really good mix when you first start it'll be really really stiff and the more you mix it and also the warmer it is the easier it'll become until it almost feels a bit like probably water just slightly thicker now don't whip it 
and don't get air in there too much because the more air bubbles you get the more you've got to try and get those out when you pour it on the artwork and really the only way to get them out is to either heat the artwork higher than the 25 degrees so the bubbles rise or use a hair dryer probably about about two feet away on a low heat setting and that will draw any air bubbles out make sure you keep stirring it backwards and forwards as well and that's it, six minutes and I'll take it over there and pour it on in a second right the five minutes is just up so the consistency of the liquid has now become actually thinner and more viscous than uh, thicker which you'd think with most glues when you're using uh, hardener and uh, resin they become thicker but uh, it's about there now so little to no bubbles and also make sure you get all the way around the bucket you'll find on most spatulas that you get they have the ridges either side to actually help Another thing when you actually put resin on to artwork, try not to touch it with your bare fingers. That's what the gloves are for. Because if you get the bare fingers then you've got the moisture from the end of your fingertips as well. And that will These spatulas it. are coming from the company or are these? Yeah, the spatulas with come with the with the, the resin. Oh right. Kit. Each time. And they can be cleaned off at the end anyway, can they? Or do you yeah. do not bother? Yeah. They can be completely cleaned off mm. using nail varnish remover or acetone. Right. That looks about ready. You can see it's pretty free flowing. So now onto the artwork. Now you've got about 10 to 12 minutes working time. And you need every little bit of your resin plumped away. So the first thing I'll do is take it off the spatula. that to the one side and pour it on. Now pour most of it on, if you won't get it all out of the bucket in one go. And once you've poured enough on, prop your bucket up somewhere just to drain the last bits out. And you'll see already in there that there is actually resin bubbling. And now, can roll her away. You can see the immediate gloss effect we get, the rich depth of colour. Like a varnish that this gives, but uh, it's even more brilliant. Now don't worry about any roller marks that this leaves behind at this stage because the resin is self-leveling. So it will actually sort itself out as long as there's enough resin in all the given areas. You can see now the shine that you're already getting on there. And the roller makes this far, far easier than using a brush. So on a heavily textural piece it's going to drop down into the textures. Yeah. That was the this is the trouble in painting these, is it getting it getting inside the textures with the brush? Yeah. But this it just flows everywhere. So once you've rolled it, right, rolled it across, you can see even on the heavily textured areas it's all already filling all the gaps up. And make sure you've got a good light as well actually going across the artwork because you need to be able to see every little area almost looking across it so you can see the shine and that way you'll pick out any areas that you miss. So any areas that you miss that's what the spare resin the little bit that's draining is for. Now we're using MDF which is pretty flat but if you're using a canvas make sure that you do make make it as flat as possible use a spirit level if you can but we know that this MDF is flat anyway so 
There's no issues then. Right, we're getting to the really, really thick bit now. So the last bit of resin we've got, right. get that and use it on your thickest areas. You want to use every last drop because resin isn't cheap. So get as much out as you can. Even if you need to let it drain again. Rich, yes, it's got the gloss going, it's looking good. There's a couple of bits on the top you just need to roll along, but yep. other than that, it's um, very, very effective. Yeah, and it really does bring the colours out as well, which is what we wanted. And it has got into those textures better than I expected, it more easily than I expected it to. I thought you'd have to really roll it in to get it, but it's trickling in very well, isn't it? Yeah. And that will be in self leveling and using that last little bit just to fill any yeah. gaps in there. Plus, I'm using a relatively soft roller as well. These are just standard paint rollers from a, a shop. Yeah, a yeah. couple of pounds for eight of them. Yep. So, nothing special about them. I think you said you weren't even bothering to clean those, right? You just no, chuck just them away because they're so cheap. And, yeah. By the time you clean them, you're probably using more. Um, more meat than the acetone yeah. than you are in buying the new rod or anyway. Right, I'm not far off now. That's looking yeah, the very top edge you've got there. a load along here, that's it. Nice along that top yeah. edge, yeah. Right across there? Yeah, right to the other end, the summit the other end as well. That's it, got them. Got them? Yep. Yeah. Well, I can see, that looks good from here. Now I've still got a little tiny bit of resin left. So let's get this in. And do you let it just sit in the bucket or do you wash the bucket out? The bucket will be washed out with yeah. um, acetone. acetone again. And what are you doing with the waste acetone? The waste acetone, in my case, just gets put in a little bag and in a small incinerator and set fire to it. Yep, good and idea. And it's the best way to actually get rid of it because you can't put it in your own domestic waste bin. And also you're only using a little tiny bit of acetone so it's not as if you're actually building a big bonfire. It's normally about two or three pieces of kitchen roll that will actually coat with it. And also it dispenses with the remaining stickiness of the resin because that's something else you don't want to get in the bin as well it will adhere to anything. Right, a little bit there. And I think I'm pretty much pretty much there. Now normally you'd leave this in a dust-free environment and most people will actually put a cover over the top of it just to make sure no dust actually gets on it. Where we are it's pretty dust-free anyway and also heavily textured work you don't have to protect as much. It's only if you like after a glass-like finish that you need to really protect it from dust. So this will be fine to be left here um, to take about five to six hours to go off but to get its full hardness you're talking 24 hours. Excellent. It makes it, like anything, look so easy when you know what you're doing. As you say, there are pitfalls of dampness and humidity and not mixing it quite right. And yeah. Pretty much and just knowing how much resin to use. But I guess once you've got a standard size, you, you pretty much know what you're going to be doing all the time. Yeah, it's um, 
your first couple of times that you do actually resin it, it's probably your hardest because you're actually working everything out. You don't know how much resin you're going to use, whether you've got the temperature right or anything like that. The thing is, don't be scared of it because it's, at the end of the day, well, it's, just treat it like a thick varnish, just cover it across that line. So cleaning up I guess is the next job is it? Yeah, yeah. I mean cleaning up is um, pretty straightforward, apart from any of the gloves. Yeah. You haven't used gloves until now? Is you yeah, they, you don't touch the resin at all during any of the processes because if you do, you actually transfer moisture to it. So gloves I've used a roller to keep it away, a spatula keeps it nice and clean, it's in a bowl so that's all out of the way. The only time you really start touching the resin is when you're cleaning and also you're touching acetone which is not good for not your good, fingers, not no. for your fingers so. nice to breathe though <laughs> no it's, uh, it's quite strong as well to breathe yeah. but if you use um, nail varnish remover it's not as harsh and it's still, it's still do the same can job. you get larger amounts of that one? yeah you can get larger amounts but normally just the cheap ones from boots about 250 mil they'll actually do a good couple of buckets yeah, because you only just need a little tiny bit. Where anyway. are you getting acetone from? Um, any UPVC window supply. Yeah, it's normally used for cleaning windows, cleaning the frames. Yeah. So uh, that's where you can normally get it from. And also just some cheap kitchen roll or roll. In this case, I'm just using it to slide this off. And as you can see, at this stage, you can still squeeze the resin out of that and that is still usable if you get it on. Don't worry about the foaming on there because that will actually diminish as well. So if you find that there's a place that's actually lacking some of the resin then you can still use the remnants of your roller just to push in there. And I can push it now because I've got the gloves on yeah. so there's no moisture. ready to go. Now for cleaning everything else down, in the bucket make sure you've got some kitchen roll ready. I've got the acetone. And that's all you need. Not much does it? Tiny amount. I thought no. I was going to need about half a pint in there to keep it. No, that's all you need. Get a little bit and just make sure you just rub your spatula down. Front and back. It's okay, move it that way. And then this, because all you've done is just moved it around the bottom and poured it out one side, it's pretty much just pick up a bit of the acetone, just rub it round. And because you're using plastic, any resin that gets left in there, if you let it hard and you can do what's called cracking out, and that's flexing the bucket once it's hard, it'll crack away from the plastic on this side. And then you just pour it away or get rid of it, so it'll be solid then. So that's the acetone all the way around. Loosen it all off, and then just a bit more kitchen roll just to wipe around it to finish stuff. resin's gone and all the acetone's gone because it's not sticky and you can feel it's absolutely clean inside. Brilliant. Pick up everything you've used, get hold of your gloves, turn them inside out over both of them and that I'm just going to be burnt and to be gone. Non-toxic. That's it. That's the whole job. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Peter. So 
you can see how beautiful the texture is on that. Okay, well thank you very much Peter, that's certainly been a great use to me. Uh, so it's a revelation for life, this one, for the rest of my work. And I'm sure that many of the other artists looking at uh, this film will enjoy what you've done. And now you can see the, the gorgeous rich texturing and colours that we get now that that uh, resin has been put on.